And welcome back. Today we are flying out. The Key 87 has been requested by Patreon, Mr. Redacted. Thank you very much for sponsoring the video. As well as thank you to all the other patrons to for sticking around and supporting me as well. Today we are flying out again the Key 87. And this thing is absolute dog ass. It doesn't climb very well, it doesn't turn very well. As a matter of fact, it's actually basically a brick. The guns are great and it goes 540 kilometers an hour at sea level at 5.7 which isn't exactly stellar if you know that the F2G goes about 650 at 6.0 it's very slow on the deck at least at high high altitude it's extremely good the thing is you never fight up there anymore so that gimmick becomes basically useless and you might think to yourself why is it a replay well all my files got corrupted I really didn't want to fly this thing again and the footage that I got out of this plane was the best I was going to make it. I got some pretty good dogfights and I thought why not make it an actual guide. So I'm going to be dissecting every fight that I'm going to have, show you what you could do different, what you should do, what you shouldn't do and most importantly I'm going to be guessing the enemy speed. I haven't looked at the speed, it's all going to be in one take so I apologize if I stutter here and there because I haven't looked at the speed yet and if I clicked on it before it's not going to be genuine so I want to make sure that I don't actually know it other than me guessing i might get it wrong here and there so be it that is part of the process so i hope you like this guide i have all the most important fights down below in the progress bar because this video is gonna be pretty damn long i think we dive on the sea fury and yes i'm going to miss this sorry to blue ball you instantly but right now i know roughly how fast he's going not because i looked at his speed i haven't looked at his plane at all yet I want to guess just so that you know how I think going into a fight. I reckon this guy's going about 450, maybe maybe 500 kilometers an hour if he tops out on the dive. He's probably going about 450 right now. And on the bottom of this loop, he will go about 550 probably if he starts pulling up into me and he doesn't just run away. So let's look. 645, pretty accurate. Right now, we're going to continue this fight. We miss. He dives a little bit. And right there he's probably going about 550-ish, 560, close enough again. And you want to take note of that. And how do I do that? I just play this game too much. I'm sorry, there's no real way to tell. It's all relative. You have to have a little bit of a knack for it and you just need to, to look at speeds. And when I dogfight people, uh, people like Razor, I constantly ask or I constantly say, right now you're going about 550. And he will say 600. Anything like that. And you can start guessing. You can start nailing it. It takes a lot of time. Not gonna lie. And I still get it wrong at times too. Because some planes just look unnatural and you get it wrong. But that aside for now. We are going much faster. We are going seven, 670. He's going about 550. He also turns worse. And as you, if you have seen my defensive flying guide. You know that going slower in a dogfight. Even if you turn worse, probably means you're going to end up behind the enemy. So we are going to keep looking at me. Let's look. We're going to pull in. I'm trying to bait a shot into him because if he does, he's going to get a little bit of worse position. So I'm going to turn underneath him here. Right now I'm going faster. I'm still going 600. Haven't been trying to bleed a lot of speed. I'm trying to bleed his speed first. He's not going as fast anymore. 460. The same as on the dogfight start, but we were a lot higher. And right now I'm just bleeding him of energy. So we are going to try to bait him into a shot. Because I know he won't really get one. We go up again. I cut my throttle. I bleed a lot of airspeed. And right now I'm neutralizing our energy difference. He's going 500. I'm going 490. Basically the same, but I'm slightly more maneuverable. The Sea Fury is one of the least maneuverable props in the entire game. So you can count on the fact that, is prob that he is probably not going to win the dogfight. At very low speed, however, he does have a better climb rate. He does have a better engine power. So you do want to be kind of wary of that. But right here, we are pulling in. And I'm going to pull in front of him, kind of. And then we're going to pull down on him. I baited a shot out of him. And here we do it again. It looks like he's about to get the shot here. This is what it looks like for him. The thing is, look at the lead he still needs to pull. And I have all the time in the world to pull away because this guy doesn't turn particularly well. Look at that. I roll out of the way. He commits to the shot. Right now he's going 450. I'm going 450, but I'm more maneuverable. He just took a shot and he threw away quite a bit of positioning. So right now all I need to do is bleed a little bit more speed. 
He's not going nearly fast enough to do anything. And he's slowly but surely going to end up in front of us. Kong 434. He's Kong 500. He has been webbing through this entire fight. I've been cutting my throttle. I'm slightly more maneuverable. So what ends up happening is he ends up in front of us. Right here, he's going to overshoot. I pull lead. He rolls the correct way. Luckily, the one nice thing about the Key 87 is the negative elevator is pretty damn strong. So I slam the negative elevator and down goes the Sea Fury. Now let's watch that in one go. Because why not? It might be on fire because replays kind of blow. Let's look at this. He's smoking. He's not on fire. So that's nice. We dive on him. He's going slower. He's below us. And being below us again gives him a little bit of an advantage. Especially if he's going slower than us as well. I pull up. He's still below us. Right now I'm still going full speed. I'm trying to bleed him off some energy. I'm just trying to stay out of his guns. Here I cut throttle. And you see my airspeed drop extremely drastic. Goes down very quickly. Here we are almost neutral. I'm going to bait a shot out of him. And then roll out of the way. He misses. We do it again. And right now he's going to slowly but surely creep forward. Because he hasn't been managing his throttle key. He ends up in front of us. And down goes the Sea Fury. And I'm sorry the replay kind of blows dick. But I can't really do anything about that. It just kind of desync. Let's watch it from one more point of view. Here I come. I missed the shot. I don't shoot on the replay, but that doesn't matter. I don't have his uh, camera, so I'm sorry for that. But you can tell I'm kind of trying to make him turn into me. I'm trying to give him the shot. And I'm very confident he won't hit it. Because, well, it's a sea fury. It's not going to win many dogfights. And you can tell I'm kind of trying to stay in front of him. Until he really bites. Until he's going too slow to really get away from us. Even if he dives right now, I can drop my throttle off safely. Because he won't be getting away from us anymore. I try to give him the shot. Kind of annoying that I'm not shooting in the replay. But there we go. He gets reversed. And at this point it's done deal. And down goes the Sea Fury. On to the next match. I'll see you in two seconds. So I kind of lied. Because it has been about 15 minutes later. Because I was hungry and I got something to eat. But we are back now. In our Key 87. Named Archibald 2928. Right now I'm just trying to get a little bit of positioning in. I see that the Spitfire on the other side of the map is... Pretty badly damaged. He's kind of tumbling in the air. What's his name? Bigfoot. Let's look at him, shall we? Yeah, he's not doing very great. So he's already out of the fight. I do not need to go there. I don't need to steal his kill. This guy is completely dead. And I'm going to leave him to rot, basically. So I'm just going to keep climbing. I'm looking around. I see a Spitfire behind me. And he was going for me for a little bit. And I didn't like that. So I just kept climbing into this direction. If he then engages us. We are basically alone here. I keep checking if he's actually dead or not. Sometimes Spitfires like to recover those flat spins. This guy luckily didn't do that. So I noticed that in the middle of the map. The F2G is fighting with a Spitfire. And the Spitfire is going to win that fight. So I want to make sure. That I get here. Before the F2G actually dies. And you can tell. The Spitfire here is completely out turning him. And he's going to kill him very very quickly. He's, I'm still trying to reel him in. And then the FG turns into the opposite direction. The FG flies in front of the Spitfire. And now this guy is going 390 km an hour. Plenty of speed to dodge us in his Spitfire. We come in. He's now 2.5 km below me. But I also want to look around. Because there's still a 1 and 9 at altitude. Flying Giraffe. As well as Free Freeman. Fre the G55. It's also above us. And this is one of those planes that's extremely annoying to fight. More so than a Spitfire. Because, well, it has those extremely good guns. So right here, we dive on the Spit. We go head on with him. We push the head on. As you can tell by the points, I get a hit in. But it doesn't really do any damage to him. And now I can actually look at how much damage it did. It's not exactly much. He has a little bit of wing damage. But I mean, it's not really going to stop him from killing us. And the G55 is now coming for us. Which is a problem. I'm going to speed this up. The G55 is catching us. And I can probably win this fight if I drag him high enough. The issue is I don't have much time. You can see on the right here that we are down on tickets. They have much more players and they have a lot of bombers. So I don't want to lose on tickets. I want to make sure that I win this. The G55 is not extremely quick. And I'm going about 430. Well 550. He's going slower. He's probably going about 
Ah, uh, probably the same speed. 550... Closer to 500, probably. Hey, look at that. 510. So right now, I'm actually going faster than him. He does have a little bit more altitude, and he can put it into a dive, and he's going to pick up some speed. And we are roughly... He still has an energy advantage. He's going to pick up more speed if he reaches my, my altitude. And I'm going to be slower than him if I get to his altitude. So he might be a little bit slower than us right now. But I'm picking up speed for the counter-attack. Because I need to kill this guy in a single pass. And I want to make him compress. And I want to make, make it a high speed fight. It's a lot easier to mess up for the enemy. I don't necessarily have an advantage at the high speed fight. But I know that I can probably pull it off better than him. If this guy is a low level player. And he is. He's flying the G55 Series 1. Mostly not flown by experienced pilots. But I can say for sure right now, I'm going to bet on it. I have to take a guess. I have to do something. Because if I play the long game, I'm probably not going to kill this guy. So what does it look like for him? I'm going to pass underneath him. And he notices that if he goes for me right now, or if he pushes the head on with me, he shouldn't do that. He should not push the head on with me. And he should not dive on me right here. He can do it, and he can simply start dogfighting with me. The problem with that is, he might overcommit. He might do something wrong. So instead, what does this guy do? He's going to run an energy trap. He can do that. He can do it pretty handily. He's going fast enough. He's going 530. We are going about 645. But this guy is going to be about a kilometer above us. And we're going to burn a lot of speed trying to pitch up for him here. And I'm going to pitch up for him because if I go down, I compress, I lose all my altitude. I perform worse, relatively speaking. And if this guy keeps his altitude, he's going to have an even bigger advantage. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go full on aggressive. So I'm going to pull up into him. And he does the right thing. He doesn't commit. He flies straight. But then he makes a mistake. He very massively underestimated how quick I am going. Because right now, like this for him, if he starts turning sideways, if he goes horizontal here, I die. Nothing I can do. Instead, what he tries to do is he goes vertical and he tries to energy trap me. Which is a perfectly valid way to play this scenario. That's what he should do. He's playing it perfectly up until this point right here. If he starts turning left or right. Or simply just loops a little bit up. Not straight up because then he flies through my guns. But even then, he's going fast enough to deny me. Look at this. He's already flying away from us. I'm going straight up at 500. He's going 500 too. And he's 800 meters above us. Roughly speaking, probably closer to 600. Let's look. 900. 900 above us. And he's going the same speed. All he needs to do now is dodge our guns. What does this guy do? He keeps flying straight. And this is something you see very often with inexperienced pilots. And now he goes straight vertical as well. And this is a great idea if I was already stalled out. But I'm going 360. I still have some speed in me. I have very long range guns. And this thing does not turn or climb whatsoever. So this is a fight. He has all the advantages right now. He has a better plane for this fight. He has a better position for this fight. What does he do? He goes straight vertical. And even though he's outrunning me. He's outrunning me completely. And you can tell. Well, he's a fireball right now. Uh, does it still show his speed? Yeah, it does. So he's absolutely dead. He's 840 meters in front of us. He has a lot more altitude, he has more speed, and he has a better plane for this scenario. But however, he's flying straight. And even though you have the energy advantage, if you don't dodge my guns after you make a pass on me, you are a sitting duck. You need to take evasive action even if you have the energy advantage. This is not going to get you anywhere. So let's look at that again. And he's probably going to be on fire now. So let's look at it from his point of view. Yeah, he's on fire. Fantastic. But <laughs> it doesn't matter. We are just going to look at me. He's slowly catching me. This looks very um, surreal. But this guy's on fire. What can I say? So he dies. He doesn't die if he's going straight. And because this plane isn't very fast. If he was in the P-50H for example. This would work. Because he's going fast enough to simply go straight up. But he's in the G-55. So that's not going to end up working. This is what it looks like for him. He passes over us. He notices that I'm pitching up. And right here, if I'm stalling, this works. But you never have to do this. 
And there's two reasons why this doesn't work. If you go straight up and you stall yourself out and you fall back on top of me, I have a lot of time to get my energy back. Whereas if you go horizontal here, you're gonna cut into my loop. I'm not gonna get my guns anywhere near you. And when I stall out, you have the speed and the distance to instantly turn into me and shoot me down. Instead, he goes straight up and he ends up just flying into my guns. You don't see the shells, that, that's so annoying. But you saw that I shot him, you saw that he died. And that's that part of the fight. So that's kill number one, the G55. Six more to come. Right now I'm diving into the middle of the map and I'm looking around because I'm looking for the last guys in the enemy team. I know that there is like three or four bombers, but I don't know where they are. So I can dive on the Junker 288 all the way on the bottom right here. He's smoking, I can see him very clearly, I know that he's there. But that would mean that I give up the advantage to the Spitfire that I still know is somewhere out there, as well as the other fighter. We can see that it's a D9, but we don't know that at this time. I don't know where he is. I don't know what's going on. I just know that, that there is multiple bombers below us. And right now I'm ma mainly looking for the Spitfire. I see a TU2. And I'm actually going to take it. Because I'm going to try and stop the ticket bleed. As well as beta fighters towards me. I don't know where they are right now. And I need to know where they are right now. So I'm going to make one pass on this guy. I'm going to shoot him down from like 800 meters. And his guns slap. And there is the Spitfire. There we go. Spitfire is low. Spitfire is not going very fast. And he's already damaged from our first head -off. So I'm going to get towards him now. I'm going to try and close the gap. I'm going to see if I can actually do anything about it. Because I want the Spitfire out of the match. The Spitfire is something I don't really want to deal with. Especially in LF Mark 9. And I know it's an LF Mark 9. Because we met each other before. Earlier this game. Right now he's going 280. And he's doing the right thing for now. He's trying to get an energy advantage by climbing. And he will get one. If he climbs long enough. The thing is I'm going very very fast. He's only going 300. And I am going about 500 kilometers now. It's not very fast to go 500. But relatively speaking it is pretty quick. But instead of trying to do anything. Because he has the performance advantage. He decides to push ahead on. And this isn't going to get him anywhere. I don't know why he tries to put back in either. When you are in a plane. That completely outturns the enemy. At an extremely powerful low altitude performance. You don't want to push ahead on. And I probably understand this, his start process. He sees key 87. He knows it's Japanese. He knows that he's being caught. He's already a little bit damaged. And he thinks I need to go ahead on. Because he's going to outturn me. The key 87 is not going to outturn you. Unless you are in the Sea Fury. And maybe stuff like the J7W. But the Tau 152. C, not the H, those kind of planes. But you want to know your planes, because if he knew that I was in the Key 87 and he knew what that plane was, he knew that he shouldn't have taken that handle. And I'm gonna show you again actually, because he actually pulled back into my shell. So what does this Spitfire want to do instead? So he sees me, he sees that he's been caught, and you want to climb for as long as possible. I probably would have waited till about Two kilometers actually, before I started diving. Right then I would have built up a lot of altitude. And instead of trying to go horizontal and push ahead on, you want to go down. You want to go down, pick up some speed and prepare for the dogfight. Of course this guy probably thinks I'm Japanese, I can't dogfight it. So I'm going to instead try and push the head on. Completely understandable, because you don't really see a lot of Key 87s around. So this guy wanted to climb away a little bit longer. Nullify as much of that energy advantage that I have. And then you start dodging me. Because I am not going to be able to hit the Spitfire. But the thing that I don't understand is this. You're going 300. You push the head on. He shot there. But he breaks off. And then he pulls back in. I am shooting at this point. And you can't see it. But right now I'm spraying at this guy. Because I need to make sure that he dies. I want this guy out of the match. So I push the head and he pushes back into the shells. If you see shells coming at you. And you don't know what those shells are. You can bet your ass that you don't want to take it. So that's going to be the Spitfire out of the way. And I'm going to push ahead on. Because I don't have the performance. That's why I was so adamant on pushing it. Because I know that if I miss the Spitfire. 
and I need to take too much time with him, I'm probably going to end up either in a 2v1 or I'm just going to die to him on his own because it's an LF Mark 9 and it's a good thing that I did that because there is the Focke Wolf 190. And it's a D9, we can see that, but I don't know what he's in right now. I believe he didn't have a kill yet. He didn't, so I don't even know if he's in a D or an A model. So what do I want to do? I actually want to force this to a little bit of a higher altitude or higher speed. And it's a bit of a double-edged sword because I just want to drag him low. Because I know that if he kills me up here, I'm going to be boned. I'm looking at what he's doing. I'm looking at what his thought process is. And I see that he's diving and I want to make sure that he actually commits to the fight. So what am I going to do? I'm going to go for a bomber. If I miss this guy, no big deal. This bomber is bait at this point. So I'm going to shoot at the bomber. Down he goes. And now this Dora very likely thinks that I am someone that doesn't see him. He probably thinks that I'm either a noob that goes for bombers. Even though there's a guy going for him. I'm kind of playing mind games. Because that's all I have in this thing. And he starts diving on us. And he's going mighty quick. And at this point, I can't even give you an estimate. He's probably going about 550, 600. There we go. Completely misjudged. Oh, well, IS is right. It's a bit, a bit faster than I thought it was. But in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't matter. I do want to be careful, however. Because at high speed, he compresses a hell of a lot less. And he's catching me pretty quickly. So what do I want him to do? I want him to pull lead for me to get a shot in. Because if he does that, he's going to throw away a lot of positioning. So he's diving on us. And he's trying to pull lead. And I see this in the way that he's flying. I see that he's trying to cut me off. And since he's trying to cut me off, this makes defensive flying a little bit easier. Because I still have a little bit of speed. Because I need the speed to get out of the guns of this guy. Yes. Two or three MG151s. Before I, I knew that it was a D9. He was going to have two, three, maybe even four if it's an A8. And I want to get out of that high speed pass. And I know that if I can force this to go a low speed fight. He will out energy me. But he won't out turn me. And right here he's pulling lead. And this is very dangerous for him. Because if he messes this up. If he messes this shot up. He's going to be in a little bit of a bad position. He's also going to compress. Because I'm pulling straight underneath him. You can see that here. Nice spark. That really didn't hit me. But whatever. I don't have much options here. I'm kind of defensive flying. And this is luck based. I need to dodge his guns. Which is going to be extremely hard. But I'm going fast enough to do so. This is why I dove. Dived. Pigeoned. Something like that. So I'm trying to go underneath him. And here I'm going to bait him into getting the shot. The thing is. He is compressing pretty badly at this point he doesn't have to boost at ailerons i saw that he had a d9 camo a little bit ago so i know that he's going to compress in the roll and he doesn't have the strongest elevator authority he's still better than us however so we do want to be careful so i'm gonna nice spark again god i love some replays man he's hitting us a lot on this replay because he didn't actually hit us until very low it doesn't matter right now i'm out turning him and you can see he doesn't have anyone near the lead on us so why this is hitting us, I have no idea. But right now, he's going faster. He's going to end up overshooting. Same deal as with the Sea Fury. Look at that. We pull straight up. And he's going 700. We are only going 500. So we go up. We roll out of the way. And at this point, if it does the right thing, we are boned. We are absolutely boned. Because he has too much energy. He's going about 750, 650. Something in that range. 760. 670, sorry. Dutch numbering. Don't, don't question it. He's going to go up. And that's the right thing to do here. Where the hell did we go? I lost myself. Where am I? Wait. Where am I? Is he... Wait. Ah, wait. Did I not... Wait, wait, wait. No, sh no shit, I didn't see him. I wasn't there, right? Because I was looking... Oh, doesn't matter. We are dogfighting, he's going much faster. If he goes up, he will outturn us simply because he has more energy. I do have a better turn rate. I do have better agility in general. Or not agility. Turn rate is better. The thing is, he has so much energy that it doesn't matter. So what does he do? He goes straight up. And I don't have many options here because if I try to dive out, I'm going to go about 500 kilometers an hour on the deck. And uh, he's still going to go 650, 600. And I'm going to be too slow to actually dodge him. So we pull up and after him. And this is of course very suicidal. But diving away is also going to be suicidal. 
but this is the kind of suicidal that's going to end up giving me the shot so i pull into him and right now he made a pretty big mistake and i don't know if you saw it i will point it out when i played in full time uh real time again in a second here and he's out turning me what does he do he rolls back into my guns so i click luckily you see the shells i use eight rounds and he goes down i take his entire wing off very unlucky let's look at that in real time from my point of view and then his so we have someone on a six he's gonna dive on us i'm gonna speed this up because no one cares about the bomber except for me oh that's so good thank you for dying and i'm baiting him down right now that's the main issue here or the main main thing we are doing here he's gonna dive on us i'm gonna start turning in he's gonna take the shot and he's going way too fast he's gonna compress and we are just gonna roll out of the way. We do it again. I didn't get damaged, as you can see. Just all decent. And we're just rolling into him. And guess what? You can see it. See what he does? Yeah. Turns right in our guns. And you can see it now because of the smoke drill. Thank you, bad replay system. Look at his line. He's going like this. And then he rolls to the left. You don't want to do that. I'm going 280. I'm stalled out right here. I hit him here. He's going 450. He has more altitude. By about 500 meters. All he had to do for the second time was go horizontal. And I'm going to look back at the previous timestamp for one reason. Please load in. Please don't crash now. I don't want to redo this. Mm, I'll cut this out, I guess. Oh, that's annoying. Ah, there we go. So I let him dive on us. I'm sorry if it's a little bit choppy and replay crashed. I kind of lost my train of thought. But he's diving on us. I'll re rewind it just now to show you his point of view. Shows you a little bit more of what you could have done wrong. You're diving on us. Very cool. Right here you overshoot. Nothing is lost here. You are completely fine. Right now you have too much energy to die. All you have to do is put it to good use. You want to go up here. You want to keep pulling. He did not. All what you want to do is roll out of the way of my guns. And then keep the spiral up. But what you don't want to do is... Look at my guns. I'm pointing here. He rolls right into it. And you might think... Did he roll into it last second? It's not the last roll that I'm talking about. It's this right here. So he misses. Go straight up. Right here. He stops turning. He's flying straight. You can probably look at his elevator. Completely flat. Is that a replay? It's a replay. Right here, you can still outturn me. You can even roll that direction and just pull. Then go horizontal and you will hammer at me. But this pull right here is what killed him. He flew straight and then he basically pulls into my guns. And then he puts the final nail in the coffin by rolling straight into him. I'm going 260. Ah yes, this thing stalls at like 220. I'm 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 doomed. I'm bone. Luckily this guy pulls into our guns. And down goes the Dora. Very lucky. Very luckily he did that. Because you can tell this thing is not performing very handily. So that's gonna be kill number five. 288 turns away. I'll show you the chat actually. 288 is of course with someone else. We come in from the side and we click in out of the air. Kill number one. This guy is going to go back RTB. He's going to rearm his bombs. Look at him. Oh, how well, nice that is. Man. Great, isn't it? Gotta love the speed up thing. He asked, he asked for a bombing run. He will get one. He bombed. And we shoot him out of the air. Kill number seven. 
not the most interesting 7 kill game but I think it showed what this plane can and can't do but mostly capitalizing on what the enemies do wrong let's look at the next and game welcome back here we are again another game another fun time and I'm climbing straight in we are we are at about 3.7 kilometers which is not exactly very high in this thing and then I notice the Jewish Spitfire Israeli Spitfire I don't know probably Israeli and I notice that he's going for us and I don't really want to deal with that so I turn away I tap out for a second to change my music and then I look behind me he's still going for us I'm outrunning him we know that we are faster so I'm trying to get away from him and make him turn away from us so I'm just gonna try and outrun him even though he will catch us in the long run maybe I can get him not interested anymore and make him turn around and he does exactly that and then the second I turn around he turns back for us even though we are faster and I already know what kind of player this is so I'm gonna turn back in and we are gonna go head on because this is the best bet I'm gonna get versus a Spitfire and because we flew away for a little bit we now have some distance to actually deal with this guy now I don't want to dogfight this guy because it's not gonna happen and here I notice the first thing do you see it? can I that doesn't work sorry do you see it here he is clipped wing spitfire and i already know that he's going slower than us because he wasn't catching us i noticed that it's a clipped wing so at this point i'm feeling a little bit more confident the problem is the clipped wing spitfire has an extremely good roll rate so i want to make sure that he doesn't try to recommit and head on so i'm gonna spray at him you don't see me shoot I, this is why i hate the replay system i'm shooting right now i break off He's shooting at us, you can see it, I dodge his guns, I pull back in. Now why he is so adamant on taking this head on, I know exactly why. And I saw this at the start of the game, he was really focused on going for us. And I'm not saying he's focusing me because of my clan tag or whatever, I just noticed that he's going for me because I was the first guy that he saw. Which is a certain kind of player, no offense. So I push back into the head on, and I almost have to take it at this point because there is an F2G around, and there's also... Where is he? A Yak-9 in the area. And I have this feeling that he's gonna come towards us. Or at least back towards us. And I don't really want to deal with that. So I pull back into the huddle. He is panicking. panicking, And he tries to, to shoot once more. And he doesn't hit us. But at this point he's too slow to dodge. And this is the problem with going very slow into head-ons. You are not getting out of the way. And I'll show you one more time. If you are going very slow, you do not have the airspeed to actually get out of the way. And you might have a better turn rate, and you better than might have a better roll rate. But if you're going too slow, you're not actually moving anywhere. So look at this. Alright, uh, let's look at him. So he dodges our guns. He's going 340, or 360, sorry. 430 speed. He is not getting out of the way of that. So I just click him out of the air. And it's a suicidal maneuver to go head on with that, like that. But I have no, I have no options. I have no chance if I take a fair fight. So again, I recommit into the head on. I won't do it all the time, but against a plane that I know has inferior guns, I'll do it any day of the week. If it's like an FOU 4B, I'm probably not as likely to actually dodge the head on. We pull back in and we don't get a shot, so we don't fire. Right now, we are going about the same speed. I think. Let's look. There he is. Is this guy? 510. He's already turning, so he's probably going about 540. Well, when, he, when we merge, but he's already turning. 520. About the same, but his plane is much better at this altitude, at these speeds, just in general. This plane is probably one of the worst Yak variants in the game. It's still much better than us, and that guy is 5.0, mind you. So, what do we want to do? Right now, I'm not taking the fight. I'm not gonna try and first turn this guy. What I want to do is either make him compress, make him rip. And I know that the yaks at very high speeds don't turn that well. So I'm just gonna try to get rid of the F2G right here. And then we will deal with the Yak-9 on the 6. We try to do that. We miss the shot. Extremely annoying. But so be it. But now the Yak-9 is reeling us in pretty damn quickly really <laughs> have to keep you on edge as well I guess 
completely misremembered. He's not catching us right now, but he will catch us in the long run because he is simply much faster than us at low altitude. So I'd rather to make the move now. And why is that? Because in the long run, he will be much faster if we take the fight later. So I'd rather take the fight right now because I want him to be a little bit slower. Sure, I can use the speed against him, but I'm going to be slower as well. And if I'm going to be slower, I'm going to have a harder time dodging this guy. So I'm going to go back to this camera view. And we're going to try and turn right into him. Right here, we give him a shot. And then just as he's about to fire, we pull out of the way. Thing is, he didn't have the lead because he pulled in a little bit too late. So it's not as dangerous. We go straight up and over. We roll in front of him. Why? Because he's going faster than 500 right now. 620. He's going much faster. And even though I'm much less maneuverable, he's going to end up flying through our guns. Of course, if he keeps the fight up. The thing is, he breaks off. He does the kind of right thing. He can just stick with us. And he will very easily clap our ass. The thing is, he goes straight up. Which is the correct thing to do. And then what does he do? He goes straight up. He doesn't make any moves. He doesn't turn into me. He flies straight. And you do not want to fly straight in a dogfight. Because even though you have a better, better position. Even though you have more energy. What ends up happening is exactly this. I'm looking at him. He comes the keyboard short. And it looks like I miss here, but I take his aileron off and I crit his wing. Not very ideal. At this point he is very badly damaged. And we are going to turn back in and finish the job. And because he is damaged, he's going to lose more speed. He's not going to turn as well. He's not going to roll as well. His plane is just severely handicapped right now. And he tries to roll in. He overrolls because his wing is absolutely fucked up. We pull back in and we shoot him down. And that's going to be the kill. Now let's look at that again. This time for his point of view. So he is diving on us. He is outrunning us. And we are going to look at what he did wrong. We do it in a little bit of a lower speed. Right here. He's trying to pull lead. But he's going 640 kilometers an hour IS. Yaks don't like that high speed. They are going to compress a little. I can tell here that he is not going to be able to pull lead. Because I'm going slower. I'm going to take nice prop. That's holy shit. That's trippy as hell. But because I'm going slower. Because he's going faster. He's going to have a very hard time to get a shot on us. Even in the deflection. Now, of course if we were even slower. Guess what. We are just stationary in his guns. Easy shot. But we are going just fast enough. So we are able to turn. But he's going so much faster than us. And compressing so much. That he's not going to get the shot. That's so trippy. Oh well. So we pull up and over. And we are going to already roll into this direction. Because I know he's going to end up overshooting if he commits to the fire. He doesn't. He goes up. And this is the correct thing. Because I'm going to otherwise. Or I'm. This guy is otherwise going to end up overshooting into the front of our plane. You don't want that to happen. So right here. You want to go up. And then pull into me. What does he do? He goes up. And he pulls away from us. And then he turns back in. You see what he did? He basically gave me the shot. By turning back in. If he had just flown straight and then noticed last second and just dodged my guns. That's all he has to do here. He only has to dodge my guns. He takes his wing. Not very ideal. Now let's look at that one more time. Shall we? So this guy is diving. All fine here. You might want to delay a little bit. Fly straight and then pull in. Gives you a much better position on the enemy 6. Diving in, pressing, doesn't get the shot. I'll find here. I'll find here. You want to keep pulling into me. And if you want to run an energy trap, you do not want to turn away from the enemy, ever. There is no singular reason to turn away from your enemy and give him your six. Unless he's in a much more, much faster plane and you're trying to bait him into a reversal. So that he doesn't run away from you constantly. Then I can understand it. But in this situation you are faster. You climb better. You turn better. You have more energy. All you have to do is dodge my guns. I cannot do anything. So. Either go up and energy trap me. Like this. But you want to, to pull that direction. If we are going to look. If this was the plane right. If the camera was a plane. And the end of the camera. Like. Oh, that's hard to portray. Let's put it this way. This orientation of the camera, I'm going to put it 
like this and you want to roll with my with this cockpit pointing at my cockpit and you just pull into me and there is nothing I can do in this situation instead you fly straight for a little bit you even pull away from me and you can already tell here we are now flying on top of each other our noses are pointing into the same heading kinda but if you're paying very close attention I'm already pulling in I'm pulling in here and this guy is doing the absolute opposite he's neutralizing he's flying straight and because he's going so much faster he's gonna end up in my guns and then to finish it off over here he is still okay all he has to do is not try to go for the shot right now I'm below him I'm already pulling in and I'm going slower 100% of the time I'm going to get my nose on you which is exactly what happened you can still turn away 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 at this point there is absolutely no chance that you are getting this shot tell, tell me does this look like you are about to get the shot your nose is pointing there my nose is already pointing straight ahead of you you are not completing this turn at this speed in this small of an area you can still roll away, you can still roll away, you can still roll away. He doesn't. He just gives me the shot. And I take off his wingtip. And that's the end. Pay close attention to where the enemy is pointing. If you have more energy, just don't fly in his guns. That's all you have to do. Dodge his guns if you are in the superior plane and you will win. Do not turn back into people. I'm sorry if it sounds like I'm bashing you. Ikeda Chizuru. But I'm just trying to be as constructive as I can. And I might sound a little bit angry. But in the end, thank you for giving me shoot. That looked weird as far. But here comes the F2G that I missed in the first pass. He just killed the 190, I believe. Let's take a look at that because I'm not entirely sure. He did. He just killed the Focke Wolf 190. And I'm now 1 on 1 versus an F2G. And I do the same thing. I'm going to make him go for me. So I go straight underneath him. I want him to pull lead. I want him to commit to this fight. But he doesn't does the right thing the problem is f2g that doesn't take the fight is gonna absolutely roll me i'm not gonna have a very good time with this so i tried to not fly into the trees here i kind of flew into that one actually and then we go straight up and i'm gonna try to maybe get a shot in because i know that i can hit him at this range and i say can i'm not gonna say i will because i won't i'm gonna shoot all around him and he's doing the right thing and this is what i mean with you can go straight up if you have enough separation i still wouldn't do it because this is risky if i hit a lucky shell you give me the ability to get lucky you want to eliminate that and you just want to go horizontal just dodge my guns you have enough speed you have enough separation you don't have to worry about me hitting you if you're doing a flat pull a, a full pull at like 600 kilometers an hour if you are below beyond nine to 900 meters to a kilometer it is not happening if you're going straight up it's much more likely i get a lucky shot in so i break off i'm going 240 yeah he's gonna go a little bit quicker in a second because he has almost a kilometer and a half of altitude advantage not very fun so i'm gonna look at him i'm gonna dive out i'm just trying to get this guy below us at this point or below my team or make him break off either or works fine he breaks off again and i'm gonna speed it up because he's doing the right thing he's not really engaging me he knows that there is multiple of my friendlies around that are gonna engage him if he gets to it low so i'm gonna stay below them and it's gonna give me the ability to get a little bit of positioning i'm just trying to get away from this guy and get a little bit of altitude i don't notice i'm just gonna look at that i'm just climbing away and the f2g here is engaging together with the la7 he gets a7 on the six he runs away he climbs away does the right thing b6 comes in the gunship and he base the A7 for the LA7. Does it go down? Not yet. I'm still climbing in the background. You can tell I'm turning around. A7 is occupied with two guys that have a lot more energy. He gets pilot snipe. After G gets a kill. LA7 goes for the A6M. He is extremely slow right now. He's probably going about 350 at most. Probably 200. Yeah, 150. There you go. He's going extremely slow. And he has an F2G B6. He's already damaged. And the FCG is already reeling him in. At this point you're too slow to dodge. You can't really do anything. You're probably best off to just throw your mouse around. Or try to pull into him. But you're just going too slow. FCG takes him down. And the LA7 and the FCG had some nice teamwork. 
I didn't expect my team to die this quickly. And now I'm coming in with not that much speed. I have enough speed, but both these guys outperform me completely. And I'm not going to start dogfighting next to a B6. So I'm going to shoot at him, get him out of the way. Because I do not want to deal with that gunship when I'm fighting two other guys. Because I already know this is going to be absolutely trash. I go for the LA-7. I pull back in. And I miss. I should have hit that, but I didn't. I missed. After he's coming in, so I want to start turning into him here. I just want to make sure that he doesn't hit this. I do outturn him in the short run. He does have a better sustained turn. But for this small pull, I will outturn him because of the angle. My speed, his speed, and just the characteristics of my plane. I see the LA-7 coming in. I need to dodge his guns because he's about to get the shot. Same deals with the Yak-9P from earlier. I see that he's getting his nose on, so I pull out of the way. And he's still going to get another one. But if you're going to fly into someone's guns without uh, getting guns on yourself, why risk it? You gain nothing out of it. FG is going to flat turn after me, which is a problem. Because he's almost going to end up getting a shot here. And I know I can out pull him into this kind of way. But I'm forced to go this way. And look at that. Now the LA-7 is on R6. Which is less than ideal. So let's look. We're gonna dive out. LA-7 is gonna be spraying at us. And he is outturning us. But he's actually pulling so much lead. That he ends up leading too much. And then corrects last second. And he's just gonna fly straight. And now he needs to correct. The thing is, LA-7 is just so much more maneuverable. That I end up with him on my 6 regardless. I dodge the F2G one more time. And I can dodge the F2G. The problem is, this guy right here. The LA-7, he outperformed me completely. I think he's out of ammo because he simply breaks off. I would have died right there. I'm going to be very clear with you. That is not skill. That is not me calculating what he's going to do. He's out of ammo. If I knew he was out of ammo, I could have fought the F2G a little bit better. But you know, you can't know everything. So you go vertical. And I see that he breaks off. I'm already dropping my flap. I'm setting up for the shot with the F2G here. And I'm going to get it. Oh yeah, I'm going to get it. So we pull up. Look at that energy difference. Look at his energy generation. I am on 50% speed. Look at the acceleration here. I'm going 100. He's going 250. 100. Misjudge it again. This, this timestamp thing is fucking me up. You get the idea. Look at the energy difference. He's now going to dive on us again. So what am I going to do? I'm going to dive. And I'm going to try to cut him over again. I'm going 450. Relatively fast for this fight. But this is my top speed. I'm not going to go up. I'm only going to go down. And I have to maneuver. So it's going to go down even more. And he has 50 kills. He has a very good shot here. So I need to make sure that I roll out of his guns. And we do that just as he's about to fire. Which is perfect. We go up and over. And what ends up happening is. He overshoots and he flies straight. Big mistake. Now I'm going to get a shot. And he's going to fly away. I get a crit. And it does absolutely nothing. 30mm crit. He goes RTB. Then they RTB. They both circle the base. The LA-7 climbs to 7 kilometers. And the last fight arrived together with one Junker 288. And they throw the game because they wouldn't engage anyone. And this is post commentary. This video is long enough as it is. Look at this guy. 7 kilometers. In an LA-7. And the F2G is camping the airfield. Pretty cool. And for the last game. And you've actually seen about every kill I've gotten in this thing. I got about 16 kills I believe. Haven't died. Mostly because that LA-7 was out of ammo. But we are getting into position here. I see there's a lot of guys on our left. Yak-3, Yak-3, F4U, Spitfire. And you can tell it's an American Spitfire by the stars. So you know it's an LF-9. No doubt about it. With the Israeli one... It could be the CW, the clip wing. However, with the American one, there's only one American Spitfire. And it's BR. So you know exactly which one it is. So, there's a Yak-3 on R6. I don't really want to deal with that. And I know that he's occupied with the rest of my team right now. So I'm going to do the same thing as I did in the previous game. Or maybe the first game. Depends on what order I'm going to use them in. And get a little bit of positioning. 
because I can take these guys one on one. I see that the Yak 3 is coming in. He's going head on with us. He flew all this way over to us. So he's probably going to go head on. Is he going head on? Of course you don't see me shoot. I click on him and we shoot him out of the air. Yak 3 down. I then see two guys on our right. We want to make sure that we do not get killed by them. And we just wait for them to dive on us. One of the Yaks dives away. Which is perfect. Then the FU4B comes in. And you can tell that instantly I don't want to take that head on. Why do you think that is? It's an FU4B. Best guns in the game. He has four of them. He has a good roll rate and he has a good pull. Not a head on I want to take. He then dives away. I'm going to push him down a little bit further. And then I just break off and get away from him. Perfect. He's now too low to do anything. And I see this Yak tree over here. And now we are the one with the energy advantage. And I'll show you the difference in fighting. Opposed to the, the few guys that we saw today. So right now I'm pulling straight into him. I have an energy advantage. But I have the worst plane. Or the worst. Well it's kind of the worst. But it's a worse plane than the Yak tree. We dive on him. We make him dive. We make him maneuver. And we just extend. Right now I can do that. Why? Because I have enough separation. I have enough speed. And even though this plane is absolute garbage. As long as I have more energy. I have a fighting chance. And even if I have less. I still have a fighting chance. Considering he completely throws it away. And I just know that this guy is a G55 from the first game. Shows you that all these five games were in the same hour or so. Or two hours or so. So we are diving on the Yak tree again. And you can tell I'm not instantly pulling lead. I was waiting a little bit. I pull lead here. And we fire. I next you a little bit. Under lead. No big deal. I'm going 700. How fast do you think this guy is going? I'm going to say about 5. 476. Close enough. So we are going a lot faster here. And we don't have to commit. I don't have to start dogfighting this guy. So we do the same thing. We make him maneuver. We make him turn. And he has to do a full rotation. To go after us. Look at his speed now. He's going 350. He puts his nose on us. 333. And that's a number I haven't heard in a while. And if you know, you know. But I'm going 533. Or 554 even. I'm going about 80% quicker. 70-80%. That's a lot of energy. Put it into a shallow climb. I'm going to get some altitude again. And I'm going to do it again. Right now, we are going about the same speed, I think. 360. 400 speed so I keep looking at the wrong one 366 about the same the thing is he's at 400 meters I'm at 1400 meters so what do we do he's locked below us and he cannot really engage us because he needs to pitch straight up and if he does that he simply dies so we recommit again but now because we've done that pass two or three times look how slow he is look how slow he is and this is the trick right here. He's going much slower. If I pull lead now, I'm not going to get the shot. So I fly straight for a little bit. And then I pull in a little bit later. And now, because the energy difference is so massive, I can start the dogfight. And because I waited a little bit, I'm still firmly on a 6. Otherwise, I would have already overshot. But right now, I'm on a 6 still. I'm still putting pressure on him. He's about to stall. I'm going to say 250, 300. 250, 300. He's slightly above us. But we have much more energy. So we just go straight up. He is not going to get this shot. He has to pull straight down. And now he's going extremely slow. Extremely low. He can't dive. He can't run. And even though he outperforms us. At this point. He is so slow. That he can't really do anything. So he tries to go vertical once more. Basically the only shot he was going to get. I'm trying to reverse me. Because if he gets above me here. And I fly underneath him. He gets a shot. Not the case, however, but he couldn't really do anything. The Yak tree, what could he have done differently? Now, I'm going to be very real with you. And that's... Now he's on fire again. He's replaced, man. So, the thing is, right. This Yak tree, despite being on fire, of course, performs still pretty well. Stalin would be like... I put it out. Of course, how very Yak-like. The main issue was being in this position. Yeah, I know. What you want to do is equalize the speed. Instead, 
he goes and sits below us. He tries to bait the shot. And that's what I would do too. Completely understandable. The thing is, if I then don't take your bait, if I don't dive on you instantly, and I just kind of fly straight and then pull behind you, you now sacrifice a lot of energy and positioning. Right? I'm now on your six. And you still have some speed. You still have some altitude to get away from us. The thing is, I have much more of it. So I can push you all the way down to the deck. And then you die. If I don't make mistakes, you can't really do much here. The thing is, if you also don't make mistakes. And just try to st stick to your teammates. Don't try to turn. Just let me come to you. You don't need to react to what I'm doing. Well, you need to react to what I'm doing. But you don't need to put try and put pressure on me. You need to try... And get me to commit to you. And if I come down to your level. I'm going to lose speed. Right now you do my top speed. So you want to minimize that. So I dive on you. You pull in. And this is all fine. Like in terms of defensive flying. You're doing the right thing. The issue is that you. You kind of put yourself in a very bad spot. By turning back underneath me. Because right now you're going 500. At 200 kilometers an hour. And the guy you are fighting. Going 720. And you're not having a shot right now. It's already far away. And now, if you want to put pressure on me, you need to turn around. And you don't want to do that. Just fly straight. You don't have to pull back after me. And what does he do? He does that. And he loses almost half of his airspeed. And you're still not catching me. What did you accomplish here? Nothing. You drained your speed. And made my advantage even bigger. So he's gonna, I'm going to keep climbing. And I'm straight above him. Right here, you can tell. I get on your six, and here you see it. I'm flying straight, and then I pull in a little bit later. And because I did that, because of instead of being here and flying and overshooting, I'm right behind you. And I'm gonna stay right behind you. I'm gonna go horizontal, you go vertical, try to get a reversal in. Completely valid, completely valid. Because at this point, you were already in a spot where you couldn't do anything anymore. Now you're stalling out. You need to dive away. And because you dive away, you get me firmly planted on your six. Come on camera, work with me. You have to go vertical. And you die. There you have it. Let's look at it one more time. This time from my point of view. In full speed. Here we are. We are above the Yak tree. He's on fire again. That's of course why wouldn't he? I fly over, I don't commit to the fight instantly, I wait till I get his 6, and I turn after him. I notice that I'm compressing, he turns down, he's gonna bleed more speed than me, I just go straight, and I go straight back up. What can he do here? Not much, but you want to just fly away from me, you do not want to try and pressure me. You don't have the energy to pressure me. If you don't pressure me, you're doing the opposite. You're giving me more confidence, because you are burning energy. For no real reason. Two and a half kilometers above you. We are going to dive back down. You're going to cut off your flight path. And we are going to make sure. That you are as slow and low. As humanly possible. We get the shot here. We, I do shoot there by the way. I don't know if the recording. Uh, one of the recordings showed you. We miss. And we go straight back up. And again he tries to pressure us. Without having any speed to do so. So I just extend again. About a kilometer of altitude. And I'm still going 300 kilometers an hour. So that's all pretty fair in game. We then pull back down after him. And we are going to make sure. That he goes absolutely nowhere. We fly straight for a little bit. We pull in. We wait for him to turn. We then turn about 1 to 2 seconds later. And it gives us a very firm position. Right on the 6. And at this point it's done deal, too slow, too low, and you are not going anywhere, because I'm still going 350 kilometers an hour. And there you have it. Mr. Redacted, I'm sorry I didn't talk much about the matchmaker, but I'll do that in a very a video that's going to come here very quickly. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you all for watching, and see you in the next one.